Hey everyone, today I'm making Cantonese sweet and sour pork and I'm going to show you two ingredients that you should have to make this dish plus one important frying tip that you need to know to make the crispiest sweet and sour pork ever. And look, my cat Smokey can't wait to taste this. You want some, don't you Smokey? You want some, yeah boy? Good boy. Okay, so here's the pork. I have about 400 grams of pork spare ribs. So the main reason why I'm using pork spare ribs is because the sweet and sour sauce that I'm making is really, really awesome. And to me, when you're eating, when you're eating a piece of meat with a bone on it and you have some extra tasty sauce too, it's just really, really satisfying. So that is why I'm using spare ribs. So for me, pork spare rib is better than using a tenderloin or, or another really fatty cut of pork. And here are some of the key sauces that I'm going to explain later. Plus we have uh, pineapple, of course. Uh, we have some onions, bell peppers, three cloves of garlic, inch of ginger, and some green scallions, okay? So first things first, we have to marinate our pork uh, just briefly for just about 30 minutes. So I'm gonna show you how to marinate this. So as I mentioned, here are 400 grams of pork spare ribs. I'm going to marinate this with, this is two tablespoons of light soy sauce and half a tablespoon of pure sesame oil. Make sure it's pure and not the mixed stuff. Half a tablespoon of Shaoxing Chinese cooking wine. A quick big dashes of ground white pepper and some potato starch and one teaspoon baking soda. Plus one tablespoon of cooking oil. And then we just start mixing with our hands and make sure the pieces are mixed well with the ingredients we just added and just cover it. Okay, so I'm gonna marinate this for just 30 minutes. And while this is marinating, I'm going to make the sauce and cut up the vegetables. And here's a warning, okay? This is gonna be one of the best sweet and sour sauce that you're ever, ever going to taste. Assuming that you have the ingredients that I recommend here. So the first key ingredient that you need is this. This is Chinese black vinegar. It gives a little bit more of a kick compared to white vinegar and it has a little more deeper and richer vinegary taste. It gives you a little bit of a slight, you know, tap on the throat just to let you know that it's, that it is different than white vinegar. And for this, I'm gonna need a quarter cup of black vinegar. So one quarter cup. So that will be enough to just tap you in the throat. But if you want, if you want a good kick in the throat, just add in like two cups. The other key ingredient is tomato puree. Yep, tomato puree. I wish that I can tell you that I was the first one to ever use tomato puree to use on a Cantonese sweet and sour pork. I normally use tomato puree to make a Mexican rice, uh, but one day when I was making sweet and sour pork, I saw this and I was like, hey, maybe I should add this in. Because a typical sweet and sour pork dish has ketchup. So I'm gonna add tomato puree and ketchup. About a quarter cup of tomato puree too. So the ketchup, if you ever notice, sweet and sour pork or any other Chinese sweet and sour dish sort of has this little bit of a reddish color and that comes from tomato ketchup. And since I'm adding tomato puree, my sweet and sour pork will have a little bit more extra deeper reddish color. So I'm gonna need equal amounts of ketchup. So it's gonna be about a quarter cup of ketchup. And then what I've got here is pineapple juice. You don't need too much because I believe that if you're making a sweet and sour sauce, you have to deliver the promise. And I don't need so much pineapple juice, just about three tablespoons. And to deliver the promise on the sweet, I have brown sugar here. This is a quarter cup, put it in. And then I'm gonna give it a mix. And finally, I need a teaspoon of corn flour. Corn flour is gonna thicken up this sauce after I start cooking it. So corn flour or cornstarch is a very, very important ingredient as it will thicken the sauce as it starts cooking because sweet and sour is a sticky sauce. And my sauce is all finished. Seriously, folks, if you put this on an old leather boot and cook it, it will taste awesome. Okay, so now that this is done, I'm going to just cut up my vegetables. So the vegetables, you just want to cut into bite-sized chunks. I do not recommend cutting your vegetables too small because when it cooks, it's going to shrink. And you want to cut your vegetables to roughly about the same size just so that they will cook about the same time. And pineapples. Now this dish goes great with onions. So I don't want to cut my onions too small. I don't want them to shrink. So I tend not to cut my onions too small when I'm making sweet and sour pork or any other type of sweet and sour dish. And right here, I've got three garlic cloves. Just gonna mince these. 
Now I tend to use more garlic than necessary and that's because I really really like garlic. It's up to you how much garlic you want to add, okay? This recipe is just a guideline, all right? It's your home, it's your kitchen. And I'm gonna mince up my ginger and that's it for the ginger. Okay, now that the dirty minutes are up, it's time to pull out the pork. Right now I have to make a coating for the pork. So what I'll need is two egg whites from two large eggs. The reason why I don't want to use the egg yolk is because I don't want the batter to be too heavy. So I'm only going to use the egg whites. And I'm just going to beat this to aerate it. Just beat the egg whites until it's frothy. Put in some elbow grease. This is called working for your meal. And the reason why I'm beating these egg whites is because it's going to give the crust a really nice tender coating. Okay, and that's it. Push this aside. And in this plastic container, I'm going to put in half a cup of AP flour and one cup of corn flour. And I'm going to throw in a teaspoon of salt and a couple of strong dashes of ground white pepper. And I'm going to add a teaspoon of baking powder just to make this breading extra poofy. Poofy is an actual cooking term. Uh, believe me, go look it up. Okay, so now that my baking powder is in there to make this breading extra poofy, I'm going to start just mixing it. So here I created some sort of a station. I have my pork here, I have my beaten egg whites, I have my breading here, and then I have a plate here to hold my breaded uh, pork spare ribs. So let's get going. So this is where some chopstick skills come in handy. I have my pork spare rib, goes into my beaten egg whites, drop it into my breading, a really, really good coating. Shake off the excess and repeat. Alternatively, you can just drop a bunch of pork spare ribs into the breading and just put a plastic uh, lid on top of this and just start shaking it. But I find that this method is better for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just a purist, traditionalist, who knows. Okay, so to know that you're doing this right, you want to make sure that your pork spare ribs are not sticking to each other. Because if, if it's sticking to each other, then you know that there's not enough cornstarch and flour mix to, to stick to the pork. Okay, so here's the pork spare ribs. They're all coated with the breading. So I'm going to show you one really cool trick so that you will make sure that your breading stays really, really nice to the surface of your pork spare ribs. I'll show you right now. So here's your pork spare ribs. What you do is you take a piece and you squeeze it just gently, okay? So you don't want to squeeze it. So you don't want to, so you don't want to put too much pressure. You want to hold it just like you're holding your first love's hand. Aww. Or you can do this before you put it into hot oil. It's up to you. Now that this is all done, let's start frying our pork spare rib. Okay, so right now I have oil inside that pot heating up and you have to heat it up to 180 degrees Celsius. Now I'm going to fry this pork two times, okay? The reason why is the second fry will give it a really, really nice extra crunchy texture. Okay, so I'm going to put in my pork. And when you see that kind of reaction from the oil, you know your oil is hot enough. So I'm just going to put some in. I don't want to overcrowd the pan. Okay, that's my first batch. Okay, that's done. Okay, as I said, the first fry should take about a minute to two minutes. Because you have to be very careful that you don't overcook these. Okay, I'm going to wait for the oil to go back up to temperature. Then I'm adding in my second batch. Make sure you shake off the excess flour. Just remember big pieces like this will take a little bit extra time to cook, all right? Especially this one, that's a big one. And I also want to mention, I'm not cooking a lot of pork spare ribs. That's why my pork cooks more quickly and I'm not putting it, I'm not over, and I'm not overcrowding my pan. So at home, if you're cooking this and you're cooking more pork spare ribs into the hot oil, Make sure you will probably need to cook yours just a little bit longer, okay? So remember that. And keep an eye out for the smaller pieces because these will cook faster, right? So just make sure that you take these out sooner. So all my pork spare ribs are fried and taken out. This is the first fry. I'm gonna wait for two minutes for this oil to go back to the temperature. And then I'm gonna, come, and I'm gonna do my second fry for just another minute. So I know frying anything twice just takes extra time, but trust me, when you fry it twice, you're gonna make it so nice. Yeah, I know, that's corny. But I'm gonna make a t-shirt. Watch, someday, it's gonna be on a t-shirt. Okay, so two minutes have passed. I'm gonna do the second fry. 
So I don't know if you can tell, but you notice it's one shade darker, right? This was just taken out. This was fried the second. This was fried already second time. So I'm gonna fry these. Look at that. Can you hear that? That is crispy, yummy goodness. Okay, so now it's time to assemble everything. I've got my walk here, Marvin. He's gonna do most of the work. So I'm gonna put Marvin down. My walk is smoking. That's a sign. Put in the oil, about two tablespoons. First thing, gonna add my garlic and ginger. You wanna move it around quickly because you don't want this to burn. That's done. Gonna throw in my onions and the rest of my bell peppers. I wanna cook this until my vegetables are slightly soft. Add a little bit of oil. Throw in my pineapple. Okay, so now that my onions have turned translucent slightly, it's time to add in my sauce. I'm just gonna push my veggies to the side, give it a good final mix, go in there. I'm gonna wait for my sauce to bubble slightly on the side and then I'm gonna start mixing it. And now I'm gonna throw in my pork, go in there. Get in there, get in there. Make sure all your pieces get covered. Check that out. Look at that sauce and the smell is amazing. Whoa, it can clear your sinuses. I tell you, that black vinegar, that's the key ingredient to making a super, super tasty sweet and sour pork or sweet and sour anything. Turn off the heat, my scallions, and just mix it. Give it a final mix. And that's it guys and girls. My Cantonese style sweet and sour pork. That's done. Okay, now time to take out a fancy plate, which is easy for me, you only got one. Okay, start building this baby up. Tell me your lips aren't salivating. It smells so sour. Pineapple, little bit of spare rib love. Some onions, some green colored. Whoa, check that out. Sometimes I even impress myself. I'm just gonna drop in some fresh pineapples here. If you guys want to order this, I do mail order. I'll send to your home. Just pay for shipping and my cost of cooking. There you go. Sweet and sour and time for a taste. Mmm. This is the sweetest, most sourest, most porkiest pork you're ever gonna taste. Porkiest pork. <laughs> so I've been making this classic Chinese sweet and sour pork dish for a long, long time. And I'm telling you, I've used white vinegar, I've used rice wine vinegar, black vinegar is the vinegar that you need for the best tasting sweet and sour pork. Now one more thing, you might be wondering what to do with the oil. I'll tell you, okay? This oil was new. I used it, it was a new bottle. Uh, right now, you can, you, you can, right now you can reuse this oil. What you do is when it cools down, you put it through a strainer into a clean, dry water bottle and you can reuse the oil for about maybe three or four times. Just don't pour this down your drain cause you'll screw up your pipes. Okay everyone, so this was another fun and super easy recipe to make at home. When you do try this recipe, do come back and leave a comment below and let me know how it went for you, okay? So everyone, thanks for joining me again. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. I do make, I will, I will be making videos about once every week or so, and I'm really enjoying this. So it's a lot of fun. And also check out my other videos, and I hope to see you guys the next time around. Okay, take care, bye.